Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Japan, where things are going pretty damn well. We have an entire New World continent all to ourselves. Look at it in all of its glory. We've got a natural wonder over here. We've got a natural wonder. Don't we have another natural wonder somewhere? Am I am I crazy? Why do I remember having to? Ah, there it is. There it is. The old Pantanal. That's not how you say that name. Pa Pantanal. <laughs> Pant anal. That's what that is. Pantanal. So we're still defending Wampert religiously, and it's pretty much the only thing holding off uh, the Protestant Reformation. So I need to get to work and I need to spread my religion over here. But I need to balance that with also getting my national parks because these national parks are a big part of the tourism that I need to win the game. We're in a relatively good position, okay? We're at, we are at risk of losing a religious victory. We're not at risk of losing domination. We are at risk of losing a culture victory and we're at risk of losing a science victory. Diplomatically, we're in the lead and culturally, we have a chance. So our best bet to try and take on this game is to go for a culture victory. Now, I absolutely don't care about trained athletes anymore because the world games, I'm never going to get this. It's never going to happen. I'll take my little bit of tourism from these things and just walk away. What I am trying to do is though, is, is there's a bit of flooding happening. Uh, we got to the anti-flooding text very late into the game. And so there's a lot of flooding happening and we're trying to solve that problem partially by feeding military engineers into the cities of Weeb Central and stuff like that, um, but also through other forms. So I need to get these uh, military engineers into the water and get them heading over here because I would I would like to connect up most of my territory with railroads so that I could, you know, move people between cities and stuff like that a little bit more easily. Um, in Otakuville, we are working on a few things, but I'm going to keep producing mass amounts of military engineers. Now, in Otakuville, we have a couple of options here. I could go ahead and pick up the shipyard. That would be 14 turns for a plus four production, as well as a significant boost to a lot of these water tiles. And I'm going to grab just a couple of these water tiles because it does seem like a good move on my part. And this city is mostly working water tiles. It doesn't have good land. So this feels like a very important move to make sure this city isn't completely useless. Um, I'm also going to use a chop on this tile, boom, to shave six turns off of that. And then I can put a seaside resort because the appeal here is quite high. The engineers were for flood barriers. Yes, I am going to use them for flood barriers, but I also want railroads because I'm that kind of guy. We are three turns from finishing the, finishing the Crystal Redentor, which is going to make uh, builders a lot more valuable because we'll be able to make use of seaside resorts more effectively. So that's something we really need to consider with regards to what we're going to be doing this game. So what I absolutely should be doing is looking for every single place that I can put a seaside resort uh, within a reasonable amount of time, like here is potentially some seaside resorts. Although I would like the Crystal Redentor to finish first, but I, I really, really, really need to be looking for seaside resort potential here. And there really isn't a huge amount of seaside resort potential. Unfortunately, a lot of the tiles are flooding, which I'm not loving. And I'm also trying to work on the Eiffel Tower here. So I think building up this city's productivity would be a big deal. I'm going to tell the city to focus on productivity. So it's 41 turns until Eiffel because I don't really care about the culture. I would rather build this faster. And Eiffel is going to be a big deal because it'll give me plus two appeal to every tile in my empire, which means that's plus two tourism from every tile of my empire that generates tourism based on appeal. We also need to start thinking about Takamatsu. Uh, we need to buy these two tiles so that we can get started on the biosphere. We're going to get started on a neighborhood. It'll take a little bit of time to build this, but hopefully not too long. We got our Renaissance walls in Otsu. Let's grab that granary real quick. Now we're having a little bit of a problem over here. Flood barriers are taking their time. Now, if I recall correctly, military engineers do 15%? 20%. So you need five charges from a military engineer to fully finish a thing. So those flood barriers are done now, thankfully. Which is quite a lot of charges, to be honest. It's a lot. And we need like an absurd, absurd number of, uh, of builders right now and military engineers. But we might be able to bring it all back. We, we, we will lose some districts, but we might be able to save quite a few. Um, we're building a lot of these colossal heads right now because they give me tourism based on the faith that they generate. So you can see here, I built a five faith colossal head and it's generating me six tourism. It's six because I'm getting a 25% modifier from the computer technology. I wonder how viable it would be to do a wonder tourism only. Could be a fun challenge. Where is my master debater? 
Here he is. Okay, take him out. Can you nuke every capital before winning? No, that would make winning harder. I do have open borders with everyone, right? Open borders, open borders. Ah, I'm missing open borders with Eleanor, but she hates my guts, so I'm never going to get it. That's fine. You can start the railway now. But most of my money is going to be going towards military engineers because they're going to help out my economy. Military engineer, another purchase. Perfect. I will plant a railroad here because that'll allow my units to transmit through the city a little bit easier. Absolutely. I want to recover these tiles if I can. So I need to send five military engineer charges to the north. So there's four on the way and then I need another one. And we have thankfully managed to finish the flood barrier in here. So this city is now protected from the negative consequences of climate change. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works IRL, but that's how it works in the game. And, uh, you know, if we don't have to deal with the negative consequences of our actions, I think we're winning the game. Uh, absolutely, we just need like a crazy number of builders at the moment so we can start to transport the land around to where we need it to be. A little bit of production. I'm hoping that every ounce of production I shove into the city of juice something or other will, will pay dividends. I definitely need to buy both of these tiles in Weeb Central to put seaside resorts on them, especially because I'm about to finish the Crystal Red and Tour. Now, can I snake a kill here? Push back Protestantism. And I think I did manage to push back Protestantism slightly. My worry is a flood of religious units over here in, in this continent. Now I'm ready for another national park. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a naturalist here. Boom. There is Cristo Redentor. So the big deal with this is the 100% tourism from seaside resorts across your civilization. So now if I go check out some of my seaside resorts and press the tourism hotkey, you can see this is generating 10 tourism. Even though its baseline is four, that four is getting multiplied by 25% to go up to five, which is then getting multiplied by two, thanks to the Cristo Redentor, which means we're coming out with 10 tourism from a single seaside resort. Now keep in mind, a single national park makes between like 16 and 20 tourism. Right now they're doubled, which is quite powerful, but still. Um, these seaside resort tiles are now hyper, hyper, hyper efficient. So I'll come in here to Weeb Central, I'll buy this tile, which magically revives the tile and protects it from any future consequences, which means I can put a seaside resort here. Uh, we have a great artist, that would be useful. I don't think I have room. Oh, I do have room for great artworks. Sure, I'll lash that in there. We finally got our oil power plant in Yaskilia, uh, which means that we're getting plus three production to every city within range of this power plant. So we're hitting one, two, three, four, five cities, which is 15 production. You'll never find a more efficient building than things like the oil power plant and the Japanese electronic factory. Now, what do we do in this city? Perhaps it would be good to build a flood barrier. Uh, perhaps it would be good to build a seaport. I would like spies. I would like traders. If I'm thinking about what can I do in this city to help things out, I do feel like empire-wide infrastructure in the form of an extra spy would be quite helpful. We managed to repair the campus over here. May as well do the quick repairs. Uh, we could do a Golden Gate Bridge. All tiles in the city are plus four appeal. 100% tourism from improvements in national parks in this city. That could be quite powerful if we were to get a dedicate the city to thingy. The problem is the Golden Gate Bridge takes 46 turns to build and I think I'm going to win the game before that happens. But it's still a Golden Gate Bridge. It would require a lot of build it would require a lot of builder to build this because I would have to put in a, like at least two more lumber mills, another fishing tile ideally too to get that in a reasonable amount of time. I think I'm going to go for the Golden Gate Bridge. I go for it so rarely in my games that I think it would be fun to do uh, to to just go for it. So I'll send another military engineer down here. You're heading up north to save these cities. So we got the Crystal Red and Tour. I think I will finish the Renaissance walls in here because it's another three tourism. It's a good use of my production. Now having a look at some of these cards, I don't really super hardcore care too much. I would like heritage tourism because that's worth 29 tourism. I think I'll just plug in veterancy because it means I can build harbors a little bit quicker. I think heritage tourism would like to be plugged in and I think I can plug it in over Science Foundations, because Mary Leakey is already gone, so I don't care about Mary Leakey anymore. Heritage Tourism is plus 29 Tourism, which isn't a bad amount of tourism, all things considered. We have Public Works, Machiavellianism. I think I'm relatively happy with what I have plugged in right now. I don't think I need to change anything. I will eventually want to plug in satellite broadcasts, but for now, I think things are totally fine. And the important thing is, even though it looks like I'm on the road to victory, we're on a knife edge here. It is so possible that we lose this game that it's actually disturbing. Uh, but there's another national park for another three era score. Beautiful, securing us a normal age. Um, unlikely that we will get another golden age, but aha, this tile has flooded and is no longer viable. Well, you know what? If all these tiles are flooding, 
I'm going to redirect the settler somewhere else, like over here, where potential seaside resorts are more likely. Plus, if I settle like here, I can grab a lot of seaside resorts, like right there. How long until the next flooding event? Five turns. It's actually slightly unlikely that I can prevent this flood. Maybe I can prevent it, but unlikely. Uh, the watermill and sushi, or the water park at Sushiville is complete. I could go for the Ferris wheel into the aquatic center. I could get universities. I don't think I really need a lot of science right now. I feel like the Ferris wheel would give me plus two tourism and a little bit of amenities. So I think that's going to come along greatly. Plus I don't really need anything except I could go for the Sydney Opera House. It's a culture and great, uh, five great musician points and three great works of music slots. So, I mean, it's not the most awful thing ever. I'm wondering how many great musicians have actually gone? Not a whole lot, in all honesty. Three have gone. So we got a library repaired in Weeb Central. And I think we had decided to go for the Golden Gate Bridge. But before I do that, I'll need to crack out two builders to make this city viable for wonder production. And I'm going to continuously produce... And I mean continuously. Uh, I'm going to continuously produce military engineers in here. We got an amphitheater in Rare Groove. So we may as well transport a great rider over there. Now, Rare Groove has done a good job in general. Could do a lumber mill there. So maybe a builder would be good. How about settling? Would settling improve my empire? I think I don't have a cultural alliance with him. So if he settles here, that's just a free city for me. Another settler perhaps expanding my empire? No, expanding my empire is not the right move. The best way to get tourism in here is potentially building archaeological museum. Well, first, let's have a quick look at antiquity. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of antiquity sites here. So there's still plenty of room for archaeological museums. Um, speaking of great works, what could I buy from you, perhaps? Ah, I could yoink another two great works of writing, which lowers his culture per turn and increases my tourism, which is a double whammy. It's a nice swing. So Juice something or other needs to get an archaeologist as does jumping jacks uh let's commit to jumping jacks and make sure that we queue up that archaeologist usually i would buy my archaeologist with gold but there's so much gold demand in the game these days that it's hard to justify it boom right we got our flood barriers in here in osaka which means the city is well defended i would love a sanctuary 16 turns to boost all of these tiles i'm gonna do it 16 turns is a lot, but it does turn out nicely. Man, I'm so sad because the potential for seaside resorts here was incredible. One, two, three. It's just out of range, yeah. Still, though, we might be able to make a difference. This All right, boom. Place. There's synthetic materials. We can now get access to the biosphere, which we do intend to build because it gives 200% power to all offshore wind farms, solar farms, wind farms, uh, geothermal plants, and hydroelectric dams. And these buildings... This building and their improvements provide tourism equal to their power and plus one appeal to tiles adjacent to rainforest and marsh in your empire and must be built along a river adjacent to a neighborhood. So we will be going for the biosphere. It is going to be a 22 turn build in Takamatsu, which isn't too bad considering this is an 80 production city, by the way. Incredible, 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 incredible. Where is that production even coming from? Because this city isn't working anything. Oh, that's right. It's coming from this giga. And I mean giga industrial zone with plus eight adjacency okay that eight adjacency gets doubled to 16 because i have this policy card plugged in the five-year plan so that's 16 production and then i come in here and i look at the coal power plant and that's another 16 production then it gets eight from the electronics factory another three from the workshop and then i have suzerainty of johannesburg giving me one two three six production oh my god that is c -c 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 crazy amounts of production. Just wait till I get amenities in here. It's going to be so good. Uh, so let's have a look at what our next technology is. I would say since we are going for a late game renewable energy tourism build as well, it could be good to pick up something like satellites and composites. Those are two techs. Which one would I unlock first? Well, composites, I'm one away. So being able to get wind farm seems pretty good because that will eventually turn into, it will eventually turn into tourism. It'll be turning into three tourism. Wait, what does Biosphere do again? It'll turn into six tourism, which isn't bad. It's not bad from a single build charge on an inland tile. Uh, we got our art museum in Timisoara. So this gives me somewhere that I can plant this. You are just AFK. Do you plan to yank the Incan settler? I don't want to be declaring any late game wars because if I declare war, it'll cancel my trade routes and my open borders. And trade routes give you 25% tourism. Open borders gives you 25% tourism. So those are significant tourism boosts that I would be giving up if I were to do that. So I won't be doing that. Um, it might be good to go for broadcast centers because it's two great musician points per 
turn, which will speed things up significantly. Now, the city of Timishoara, probably the honestly, the best thing I could do in here is to get myself a couple of builders and then fill this desert with colossal heads. If I fill the desert with colossal heads, that's a small trickle of tourism. Not a huge amount, but a trickle. A trickle of tourism is better than a trickle of pee. Hashtag facts. I don't like that I have to manually like walk my units through this street, but I do think it's faster. So I've got five charges heading up to Yagmatana. I've got this lad here slowly building me a railway across the continent. What is the best way? This desert could also be used for Colossal Head, so it may actually be worth it for me to get a settler here at some point. All right, so show is well established. Let's go ahead and look for a place with commercial hubs. I've got one in... I don't think I have anyone in Wanuku anymore. Or Venice. So I'm going to send him to Wanuku. Where are my spies? Yeah, I've got one on the way to Venice, one on the way to Wanuku, and I've got room for three more. So spies are going to be a big part of what I need to do next. Yamagata. Boom. First insertion of, um, of military engineer charge here to build this flood barrier. I might not be able to save these tiles. They're probably, it's probably too late, but I'm not going to just give up on them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it the old attempt. So I could get a Moai here or a Colossal Head. Does this have a jungle on it? It does not. I'm going to get the Moai for fun. Uh, rare Groove. Oh, I already used these lots. So I may as well teleport you back up to Fukuoka. We're going to harvest this. That'll get me a builder. Colossal Heads get most yields from surrounding uh, features. Yes. However, I have nothing else I can put here that immediately gets me tourism. I could theoretically plant a bunch of solar farms in anticipation for the for the biosphere but i'm like so many techs away from solar farms because i'm like what sanitation to do to do that's so many turns so many so many so many turns um at my current level of science i don't think that would i don't think that makes sense at my current level of science that's my take there so if we're looking at a city like fukushima what are we doing in here to generate tourism probably not a huge amount i feel like a dam would help with our tourism because that would eventually become a hydroelectric dam. An industrial zone wouldn't be bad either. I mean, we could just do like, we could do another industrial zone city just for the meme. Why not? Let's just do it for fun. Who cares? It doesn't actually help me win the game, but it'll be fun. It's kind of the only thing that matters to me sometimes is not whether or not something will effectively like win the game for me, but whether or not I'll have a good time doing it. Hedonism. Ho! Oh, I want to make sure that I'm trading with this lad. So I'll keep trading with Wanuka because it's a 25% tourism boost and it's 50% at social media. So it's like actually a pretty big deal to maintain those international trade routes. All right, insert military engineer, step forward, insert military engineer. I'm going to disable the rocketry here just so he has to repair it because they're expensive to repair. Gain sources, then siphon funds. We're definitely disrupting his win condition. Let's plop a city right there in Matsumoto. Now, this is going to be almost entirely seaside resorts, which is why we really need the Eiffel. Speaking of Eiffel, let's double check that nobody is building it. All right, we're the only one building it. That's perfect. So we have a good chance of getting it. Now, if this is going to be a seaside resort town, that means a lot of harvesting. But it also means flood barriers. Let's also continue to purchase military engineers because we need to sustain railroad building and stuff like that i think i'm going to harvest out this do i move magnus to the city perhaps do i have time i'm gonna have to do a lot of tile purchasing here well they're they're only level th one two three they're only level three tiles flooding so maybe i can get away with not doing much tile purchasing until the flood actually happens in three turns so we got we got time we got time to mess around like boom, Seaside Resort plus four. We'll put a couple of forests around it to bring it up to a plus six. Because remember, that's getting doubled by Christos. So every plus one appeal is huge for me. Is there a li list of which wonders the AI prioritizes the most? Uh, no, but there have been studies done of like when the AI tends to finish a thing. So gain plus one error score when you extract an artifact. That's quite good. I think feel like Wish You Were Here is probably one of the better ones to go for here. Um, Bodyguard of Lies is quite good too because it's a nice trickle of era score. Automaton Warfare would be good if I was going for giant death robots, but I'm not. Sky and Stars is quite good too. I feel like Wish You Were Here and Sky and Stars are both equally good here for me, but I feel like I'm going to go for Wish You Were Here. No, I'm going to go for Bodyguard Lies. I'm going for spy stuff and I'm doing a lot of spy operations. And these, that means it's a one era score per spy every six turns and I can have three more and I'm working on spies as we speak. So that's going to be a lot of era score throughout this era, considering it lasts. I'm probably going to get four to five era score per spy, which is pretty respectable. Okay, so we got the shipyard on Takuville. The city has now respectable production. I definitely need a builder to throw down a couple 
a couple of ski resorts here. I know it's probably a bit illogical that ski resorts can go on desert mountains, but listen, don't question the game too much, okay? Uh, oh, I don't like this. All right, so we have Protestantism here. It is here, and uh, I don't want it to be. So that's going to be a couple of extra apostles here and jumping jacks to try to fight this back. I may, I may need more. I may need, I may need inquisitors, actually, but I can't start an inquisition. God damn it. So how much for a harvest here? If I wait the four turns. Yeah, if I wait the four turns, I can harvest out perfectly. All right. Insert. Boom. And we've saved Yagmatana's tiles. Perfect. We use one of these military engineers to connect my empire up with railroads over here, because it would be nice to have rail uh, to move builders between cities. I think I need to plug in logistics here, so I'm going to do that next turn to help me build my railroads. Imagine going for a nice vacation at a seaside resort and there's a big wall blocking your view. True. I mean, look at this seaside resort. Look at this giant wall. How could you, how could you actually enjoy this seaside resort? I feel like, I feel like there's like a comic book or a movie like in the making there. I could actually harvest this feature to finish the wall this turn and then use this military engineer to build railroads. Uh, between my cities and save a charge. I think saving the charge is the right move. Uh, seaside Resort. Yes. All right, boom. Seaside Resort here. Perfect. Oh, uh, we're getting a ton of tourism now. We should be close. 42 turns away from winning, which is pretty damn good. 33 turns on the Eiffel. And we got our first neighborhood as well as social media. So what we want to do is we definitely want to plug in online communities for that 50% tourism boost. The hard thing is, what do we get rid of? Oof. Oof, 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 oof. I definitely need to keep Public Works. That's an important card. New Deal, quite good, but also could go. Of all the cards I think I would get rid of, it might be New Deal. Religious Orders is like preventing me from losing the game. So I might have to get rid of Sports Media here and just live with the fact that I have a little bit less amenities and take online communities. I also need to take Logistics so I can move my engineers around a little bit more easily. I think that is the build that we are going for here. I think I'll pick up Opera and Ballet purely just for the two envoys there that I could use to take control of things. Rapid deployment. Awesome. We've got globalization here. I don't think I care too much about globalization. I'd rather get environmentalism for that 25% tourism boost across my empire. Now we got our Ferris wheel. Do we go for the aquarium? This gives amenities in the local area. Quite powerful to get a lot of amenities in this area, as well as a little bit of science on our coastal resources. And it leads to the aquatic center, which gives you plus two tourism for each wonder built on the city or adjacent to the coast, which is quite good, as well as a bunch of extra amenities. So this could be quite powerful too. I think I think I go for the aquatic center for the extra amenities because having high amenities is quite powerful. Uh, let's have a look at potential good missions. Not many people built commercial hubs this game. So I'll probably be looking for theater squares maybe to steal from. Like maybe I could steal a few great works from you. Yeah, I don't think stealing great works is very powerful. I think I would rather, I'd rather cause some mischief. And if I'm going to cause mischief, it's going to be inside the Incan Empire. So I'll probably head to Machu and see if I can start like recruiting rebels and stealing tech. Let's get our sixth and potentially final spy. We've got a neighborhood in Takamatsu, which means it's time to start the biosphere. It's a 21 turn build. Takes quite a while, but considering it's nearly a 2000 production cost uh, building, we're getting it relatively quickly. And that will open up the potential for solar power and wind power uh, tourism, which is a very, very powerful powerful way to play now let's go seaside resort here lovely and then you'll grab yourself another builder in terms of promotions i don't actually have a huge amount of promotions left that i care too much about reina is going to be useful for renewable subsidies because that's going to be extra even more tourism patron saint could be helpful for moksha but eh i think we just make our way to parks and recreation we might be able to make use of those parks a little bit um what were we looking for we were looking for something to do with religion. That's right. I need to fight these guys away. So what do we got? Promotion. Translator. Not very good. And we also got... Translator. Not very good. Lumber mill here. Boom. We're down to 29 turns on the Eiffel Tower. Perfect. Do another forest. Lumber mill. I'm no longer buying military engineers. Well, it might be a mistake though. I could... You know what? I could finish this in a couple turns. I'm going to harvest... And then harvest. I'm going to move Magnus. I'm going to move Magnus over to Raman Alley. Uh, so I have a double chop here, which means I need less military engineers to actually fix the city. And then I'll get an engineer onto this deer to try and like do a double chop and finish that real quick. Um, lumber mill. I'm going for a lot of like disparate ways to get tourism, but they're all kind of coming together nicely. We're ready to continue to steal. I think it would be good to disrupt the rocketry in here. It's a 90% chance of success. Probably lower than that in actuality, but... Disrupting rocketry 
would uh, provide me with just a little bit of a time based buffer zone against my enemies. So unfortunately, a lot of tiles just flooded there. We did get opera and ballet and I am hearing rock bands. Let's have a little bit of a look for rock. Yeah, I don't see any rock bands, so they're obviously happening somewhere else or they're not having a big impact. Isn't tourism still broken with Monopoly mode? Yeah, that's why we put it on to make it harder because Patch of Cutie is also taking advantage of the Monopoly uh, mode, which is why he has so much tourism, I believe. Oh, he never got a Monopoly. Never mind. I thought he would. If he had, he would have probably would have won the game. So the nice thing about uh, having plus one movement on your military engineers, it means it allows you to move into difficult terrain and build a railroad. So you see here, I can move into this forest and place a railroad, which means two engineers together can build two railroads per turn across even difficult terrain. Now, really difficult terrain like hills and stuff like that, will a hill forest will still provide a problem, but it means we will be able to connect up these cities quite a bit easier with these mill engineers, um, which is the goal, of course. Because it means this guy can step here and still build, and then this guy can leapfrog over. So you can kind of do some leapfrog leapfrogging with your military engineers. Uh, oh, no, that's not good. That absolutely must be built ASAP. How long until flooding? Eight turns. Well, uh, let's get buying some more military engineers. Uh, lots of flooding over here. Let's revoke this flooding license and then save these tiles. Yeah, that's fine. So we saved all the tiles. We got Renaissance walls in Fukuoka. Let's quickly grab a theater square. We need to hunt down these religious units and start placing, I don't know, can I get more production in here? I could theoretically. Mm, Kobe needs help. So I think we were gonna lay down colossal heads in here, but we discussed it among ourselves and decided that solar panels would be more interesting. So that's what we'll slowly get to work on. Any save recommendations for a score victory? Uh, pick Russia is set the turn limit to one. Um, Settler city and instantly win the game. Okay, we're down to 23 turns on our win condition here. That is perfect. Now, I didn't name these cities. These cities were named by chat. So you got an issue, take it up with chat. All right, boom. Seaside resort here, step up there. Har oh my God, the flood barrier got way more expensive. Oh, because I bought more tiles. Oh, I messed up. You're supposed to finish the flood barrier, then buy the tiles. I messed it up. Yeah, because it's based on the cost of the number of tiles that you need to cover. Railroad, railroad. We'll be able to get over there pretty quick. Uh, well, you know what? Part of life, sometimes that happens. You screw yourself. You try to be too smart and the game, uh, the game humbles you. 100% production towards, I would say, um, I want the moon landing to get wrecked. I'm okay with climate accords. I'm okay with all of this and climate accords I'm okay with. So having CO2 emissions, so CO2 emissions is bad here, which is not ideal. Um, the climate accords just passed and yeah, I'm the, I'm the biggest polluter, which makes sense. It makes sense. Now I could decommission my power plants, but the yields from those power plants are... It's not worth the two diplomatic victory points, in my opinion. I think it's dumb that you, you get it for decommissioning nuclear power. It's kind of dumb, in my opinion. So our next card... I can't remember what, what just went obsolete there. The hell did I even unlock? Did I just get a wild card out of nowhere? What got obsoleted? Does anyone remember? Or was I getting an extra wild card slot from something? Shoot. What went obsolete? Ah, Vissel Banken isn't in anymore. Boom. Minus 50% minus 50 of Manhattan Project is pretty predictable from the AI. Not that I care because I'm not going for nukes this game, but still. So let's start feeding in to finish some of these. Oh, these got more expensive. Um, yeah, I need military engineers over here ASAP. The constant flow of them. It actually made this take longer. Chopping that tile made this take longer. Is there a reason not to make ski resorts? I don't think there is. Ski resorts are just a net positive. This this isn't how the pathing should work. Why is it two out of three? Oh, because the card got reset. My government got... Yeah. Okay, well, I can do this. All right, down to 24 turns on the Eiffel, which is pretty good. She wants to sell me a couple of great works. I'm going to accept that deal. Every little great work that I get is a step towards victory. I refuse to stop my operations. Now we got access to composites and we could do wind farms. Uh, one of my spies was captured. That's unfortunate. We're getting somewhere in the region of five to 10 tourists per turn. Let's come over here to patch a shoot. Listen, dude, dude, g give me this. So 27 gold is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Cause I can just send it right back over to Antawalia and go back to stealing gold there. It's exactly what I'm going to do because I'm a treacherous bastard. 
Now, interesting thing to note about how tourism works is that you cannot get tourism from tiles that are more than three tiles away from your city. So if I put a wind farm here, it will give renewable power, but it will not give me tourism in the late game unless that has changed. So once I finish the biosphere, uh, I'll be able to show you that if someone reminds me. Otherwise, I'm 100% going to forget. Make sure we keep build, buying military engineers. Feed an engineer in here. Keep feeding engineers. Boom, boom, boom. And another one. All right, awesome. We can finish the flood barrier next turn. So you're going to make a railroad. You're going to step forward and make a railroad. You step up and make a railroad. We're going to railroad our way over to here and try and save these cities. Um, that's so that reinforcing engineers. The reason I'm doing the railroad is, yes, it's slowing me down from getting to those cities. But it means that any reinforcing engineers that I bring will be able to get there relatively quickly. I am doing like three independent railroads, which is probably a mistake. But um, criticize me all you like. I don't care. How many attacks till Biosphere? I have Biosphere. I'm currently building it. 16 turns. Now, in theory, I should be able to attack into the water, kill this guy, and kill Protestantism in the area, and potentially convert some cities. Buy myself more time on that religious victory. Speaking of buying myself time on the religious victory, 800 turns. I am Hinduism, Hinduism pressuring back. Um, missing open borders with just Eleanor. So that's fine. Let's keep stealing gold from uh, the Incas. War? Why? Did my ally declare war? My ally declared war the turn my alliance ended. This is really bad for me. I don't want to, I don't want to be at war. This kind of screws me a little bit. Can't win, win windmills can't be put on water until you unlock, uh, until you unlock offshore wind farms, which are unlocked the predictive systems, which are a very, very late game technology in the future era. These windmills are wind farms. They can only be placed on hills tiles. I think it's time for the aquatic center. It's a ton of amenities and it's a ton of tourism. Boom, boom, boom. Jumping jacks, archaeologist done. And really annoyingly, he has all of the, 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 the antiquity sites that I want to be hitting. So that's like super hyper giga annoying. And he might try to invade the new world, which is going to be even more annoying because I don't want to deal with that. So like this whole declaring war thing is like super not my vibe. I'm not vibing right now. Can you tell? Railroad, can you make it to the city? Can, just about. So we've got a convergence of railroads starting to happen. Good news. So we got our archaeologists and jumping jacks. What would give me the most tourism in the city? And it's probably a neighborhood to go for a shopping mall. So I'm just going to do that. Either that or a builder. Wipe out the Inca. No, I want to do it without war. I want to win without war. Now, I do lose a lot of my boosts here. I lose basically 100% of my tourism pressure against him, which really, really sucks because I was hoping for more. But I, th I think it's fine. We'll, we'll piece him out in, in 9 to 10 turns and we'll act like nothing ever happened. Because as we all know, nothing ever happens. Ah, Leventa. I don't want to be at war with you, so I'm just going to like take Susan 3 of Leventa. I want those colossal heads. This is why you sit on your envoys. Everyone always asks me, Potato, why don't you use your envoys? Why don't you spend them? It's so that you can take Susan to your key city states like Laventa when you need to. Yeah, that is me impersonating the virgin chatters who, uh, who criticize my gameplay. Everyone I disagree with has an obnoxious voice. The archer is going to defend Sushiville. Do you have containment yet? What the hell is containment? Oh, I probably should have that plugged in. But the problem is I have all these cards plugged in. So I sound when I backseat game. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, okay, so what am I doing in the city of Timishora to claw my way? Could build Bolshoi Theater, 26 turns. Alternatively, I could put way less turns into a neighborhood and get comparative amounts of tourism. Uh, I don't think stealing from Sheffield will really yield much, but I may as well start doing it to level up my spies because completing spy missions is worth era score, if you remember. Grab myself another trader. I'm actually amazed that you survived the start of this game. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit baffled myself how we managed to pull it through. So you do the leapfrog and the leapfrog and two tiles a turn. We're making our way over here. Probably not fast enough, if I'll be honest with you. But the important thing is all of the military engineers that follow along this path get over here way faster. So reinforcing military engineers make their way here super, super fast. Let's sell some goods. We haven't sold stuff in a while. I'll get some raw gold from you. I'll get some raw gold from you. I'm looking for raw gold now. Add a random assortment of things. And we're all good. So now I have the money to continuously purchase more military engineers to keep sustaining. This is one thing I don't love 
Um, even though it is a really satisfying puzzle to take part in, I don't love the late game sort of, oh, you know, you're primarily spamming builders around and stuff like that. And it's a lot of, a lot of tile improving happens in the late game. In a tourism game, while it is satisfying, it's, it's, sometimes it's a lot. It's a lot of micro. Make your way back to that. Here to heal. It's not bad. It's just a lot. So we're starting to shave turns off this flood barrier. Oh dear. Well, these units won't do anything. It's only a lot if your empire is large. That's a good point. Uh, my empire is like absurdly huge. And that's contrib contributing significantly to the amount of busy work that I have to partake in. How is the space race going? All right, looks like I've more or less stopped him. Wilhelmina is still doing okay. I'll have to start pillaging her spaceports with my spies. But otherwise, we're doing okay. All right, now I can do the triple leapfrog if I'm careful with how I do it. Boom, boom, boom. So now we're moving at three tiles per turn towards this. We've made it to Matsumoto. So now reinforcing military engineers can get there in like two or three turns. And now I've got a chain of four military engineers down here moving as one. I don't know how many more military engineers I'm going to need, but I am going to just continue to produce them because you can do interesting things with them. So I got a builder in Otakuville. I don't remember why. I think it was actually to get the ski resorts up. So the ski resorts are going. Do I have the appeal here? No, I don't really. Not until Eiffel Tower. I can't change these Nazca lines to seasides. I think I'm going to buy this tile to secure it from flooding. A seaport wouldn't be bad for gold income. Uh, the real move, though, is probably to build a neighborhood or to just have a lot of builders in reserve for continuing to retool my empire. Like it's just it's, it's just objectively the best way for me to get tourism is to is to make builders right now and in the long run. Although then again, in Otakaville, what I could also do is work some campus research grants to try and convert my science or even just focus on science to try and shave a few turns off of these techs. All these techs have prices in like the thousands. So like two or three science in a city isn't gonna like shave that much time off. Like if I do this project 15%, that's like an extra, like an extra four science here, plus a little bit here. I mean, I guess it'll shave a turn or two off. So we'll do that for a little while. As soon as we get to that, we got our first wind farm down in preparation for the biosphere. Biosphere is only 13 turns away. Um, I don't really have a way to speed that up unless I focus on food and then production and then lock in the high food tiles over the high production tiles. That would allow me to grow faster, but I can't grow fa I don't have enough high food tiles in here to grow faster than it would take to build. So I may as well just do that. I definitely, as a, as a player, one of my biggest evolutions, I would say in the last six months, has been that I respect the growth. I, I respect the growth a lot more than I used to. I used to think growth was worthless. Ow, I just hurt my neck moving. Could you someday make a video about what unit promotions are good and what combos to make when leveling up units? Yeah, definitely. No wonder engineers left. No, only space race ones. Um, we got screwed out of that, unfortunately. Why can't I put a colossal head here? That explains it. I wasn't Susan of Leventa. Big thing I'm waiting for is Eiffel Tower right now. That is like the big... Eiffel Tower and Biosphere are my two big key sort of go-go gadget win the game items right now. Oh, giant death robot. It's kind of scary. So replaceable parts makes our farms better and gives pasture improvements plus one production. Not really a big deal. We did fail to steal. It's okay. And we got another spy. Let's look for spaceports in particular. I cannot spy on my ally. So that puts a little bit of a timer on the game. Although it does say that I win in 12 turns, which I don't think is accurate. Uh, what else could I do? I guess neighborhoods are fun to like start some shit on. How does the builder have three movement points? It's because I have the logistics card plugged in, giving me plus one movement to all of my units if they start inside my territory. And that includes b -b 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 builders, right? Boom. First guy fed in, which is perfect. 20% of that production is done instantly. So how we cross this matters a lot. This first guy is going to go, well, the guy at the back, you can make it to the city and make the railroad. Then you can make it to here and make this. You can then climb the hill and place a railroad and then you should be able to scoot all the way past. So by you by correct by moving your engineers in the correct order, you can actually build four railroads per turn, even through difficult terrain. Although not extremely difficult terrain, but through difficult terrain. So now we're approaching Kobe at a rate of four railroad tiles per turn. I may break off the first lead railroad guy and send him there because there's another railroad guy coming up at the rear and I don't think it's really efficient to move five like this. Railroads just for movement. It's so I can get military engineers to where they need to be to repair these flood barriers. It would have like, yes, I spent a lot of time like, oh, railroading my way over here, but I have another five turns to get there. So I should be able to do it. And it means now reinforcing 
military engineers to the north here. These ones can cut their way across the continent in like a handful of turns, which is like a big deal. Some of these aren't going to get built because I got to them late, but it's okay. Plus railroads are just fun. I don't always do like these days. I no longer do everything purely because it makes sense to do it. I sometimes I just do things because they're fun. That's like my new way to play. It's just that, you know, I don't know. It's just if something is fun to do, I'm probably going to do it. Making railroads is fun because you get that big, satisfying, you know, railroad movement. Because like, look how much, look how much movement potential my units have, right? I can move so far. How long until peace? Six turns until I can peace out the Inca. I think that's the last of the military engineers. Once the flooding happens perfectly here, that's it. It's over. Uh, any China playthroughs lately? I'd love to see how many wonders you can pull off with Builder Spam on the right cards. You could probably get like five or six wonders in the early game but beyond that you're going to just struggle because you're spending too much time on things that aren't science and culture i see the netherlands has kind of given up on trying to convert me with which i am okay I'm trying to find tiles i haven't already like heavily improved money ain't getting you any tourism yeah it does you could you could buy great works well i can't buy them right now because i'm at war with the guy who has them but usually you can buy them all right let's yoink an artifact to cleopatra perfect so saying 12 turns was, it's saying 12 turns last turn. If I refresh this, 23 turns. So we're like a pretty reasonable distance from winning. But I think, I think we can do it. All right. Feed a builder. Feed a builder. One more charge. Should do it. So let's think about how we do a four-man leapfrog. I think we do railroad. You always start from the back and you go forward. Unless you hit a hill. And then you can do a four-man leapfrog. Movement cost of one. So that would be one. Yeah, I think I might be able to almost make it to Kobe next turn and start feeding builders in. I'm going to trade her in Wambert. The amount of micromanagement that's required here uh, in the late game is kind of crazy. No one's building the biosphere, right? Because that would just, I would just lose my mind if someone was, okay, no one's building the bio. I would actually just completely alt F4, go to war with everyone. I would declare war on the world. If someone built the biosphere before me, because I'd spent so, like so much of my game plan around that. Do you have any tips that can help me stay active in my Civ humankind games? So in the late game, mid game, I'm not just hitting next turn button because I think I've done what I can. Um, it really just comes down to practice and also take a break. If that's what's happening in your late game, buy another naturalist. I think I could actually afford to do that if I go chunk chunk and then buy a naturalist. Uh, okay, so that would be, let me see, he's got two movements, so he started outside my border, so I don't think he can make it. One, two, three, four, so that would be a quarter move, that would be, a, yeah, it would be a full move. So he can't assist this turn. You can assist by building a railroad straight through the Eye of the Sahara, and boom, we got a railway all the way to the city, and now this guy, no, he can't make it because he started outside the city. Oh, that might be, that might be, that might be the GG that we were looking for. Oof. Um, finish that. Get into Ram and Alley. No more time to screw around, sadly, to make railroads. Um, dudes just need to get to their destination. Get over here and get in the water. Get onto land. We might be able to save some of these cities. Uh, why do these... Everybody make these kind of rails or something. Uh, they're just fun to make. That's why. There is no real advantage to it, to be honest. Military engineer. Do railroad connected cities get a production boost like in Civ 5? No. It, it's just fun. So 100 science deficit. How do I make this city better for tourism? Uh, and I'm going to finish that theater square festival. And again, it comes down to builders. It comes down to the fact that the second I finish, the second I finish the biosphere, my tourism potential goes massive. OK, one of my spies was killed. That means I actually am going to come back over here to 100 science deficit and instead build a spy. Ice cold furries had its furries drowned. Well, look, we couldn't save the furries. All right. It couldn't happen. We still have a full 100% monopoly though, so I don't, I don't think we care too much. Nine turns until I win. Well, wow. game is being generous. It's starting to break up all of our old infrastructure. Uh, swap that tile. You come forward, make me a national park. Boom. Perfect. Delete, 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 delete. More national parks. We're up over the critical thousand tourism per turn. I don't see any enemy religious units. No, we're looking okay. I am a little bit worried. Man, I wish I could do Inquisitors, but I'm a little bit worried. What's the what's the flip time on this? Oh, the flip time is forever. It's never happening. We're fine. 260% tourism boost from Monopolies. Yeah, maybe maybe I shouldn't have had Monopolies on, but I felt like it made the game more fun, but maybe, maybe it is just too broken. I don't know, but that's like a little bit of brokenness is part of the fun, no? Maybe the game would have been a lot closer 
I mean, it is still like super close. I wouldn't have even probably been in the running. I would have had to go domination. So in that sense, they say the best way to visit Tsuchifil on a summer day, the sun sets and the light of the water park come alive. I mean, to be fair, right? If you think about, right, the, the tourism boost I'm getting from this is 204%. Consider that I own literally like half of the world's luxury resources, okay? Consider that. I own, like, of course I should get some kind of benefit. I managed to secure half the world's luxuries. No? Disagree? Aquatic center in the capital. Boom. University. Just for a little bit of extra science because they're running out of things to build. Really, it doesn't need turns to go by. Uh, in Tokyo, there's not a whole lot I can do to improve my tourism. I could get myself a entertainment complex, which I will do because it's a little bit of appeal to these national parks. I'm curious what tile of my empire has the most tourists. So 23 on the old world, which is this theater square right here. Even my wonders don't actually have that many. Like, look at this. The mausoleum has only generated a thousand tourism across the whole game. It's not like that much. Like, realistically, it's like a little bit. Uh, what are we, what else we got? We got tw 35 from this national park because it's made 3,000 tourism. Now, that is a good, good tile. You can see why national parks are so highly valued. Look how many tourists they absorb. Now, the really nice thing is too, if you go for the Renaissance wall strategy, you get a nice little bit of passive tourism on all of your cities. Each of these cities has dragged in five tourists. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Just dragging in a little bit of tourism from every single city. And then look at these, these older seaside resorts. Or, or rather, these newer... Wait, why isn't this touriseming? I don't understand. Anyway, like even these newer to see... These newer... Like 18 tourism from a single seaside resort. That's powerful. That's powerful. All right. Let's start feeding it to Kobe. Kobe LaBeouf. Is he getting close to a win? Absolutely. It's saying I'm eight turns away from winning. I'm probably a little bit more than eight turns away, but we're definitely right on the verge of a victory. On the verge. It's getting hard to click on things. Biosphere ETA, eight turns. Can't get it any faster, unfortunately. We did get our Sanctuary in Osaka. Um, somehow these tiles flooded. I thought we built our flood barrier in time, but apparently not. Um, we got our Sanctuary in Osaka, which is a nice boost to the yields here. Man, this whole game is just filled with like really, really cool moments like yields and all that kind of thing. <sighs> What's the best way? Honestly, the horrible thing is nothing but builders actually helps me win the game here. Oh, shoot. I never unlocked capitalism for stock exchanges. So we'll quickly stop off at capitalism. And the sucky thing about builders is that they take so much micromanagement. So uh, here I get a chance to show you that tiles more than three tiles away from your city will not generate tourism i just built this colossal head and it has no tourism symbol now of course it is slightly buggy because for some reason a couple of things don't have tourism symbols but usually usually things will have a tourism symbol over them so you can see here uh wait what okay i'm pretty sure it says now if i remember correctly how it works is it says that it's generating tourism, but because it's four tiles away, it's not actually generating tourism. See, the lifetime accumulation is zero. Lifetime accumulation is zero. Lifetime accumulation is 23. It says, it says that it's generating tourism, but it's actually not accumulating any because in order for an item to generate tourism and accumulate it, it has to be within three tiles of a city. So if I wanted this tourism, if I wanted to claim this tourism, I would have to settle a city here and claim these tiles. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. All right, Kobe. I like how these tiles aren't flooded anymore, even though they are flooded. All right. Add military engineer. Add military engineer. You're supposed to be in the water. I'm so confused. I think I broke the game, guys. All anyway, right. Get in here. I think reloading messed with things because this is all supposed to be flooded. Okay. This is so weird. All these are submerged. But whatever reason, reloading the game like messed up the thing. Is settling a bad desert city worth it for the tourism from improvements? Probably in the late game, yeah. What happens when your city grows and you build a park, but one tile of the park is on the fourth ring of tiles? I actually haven't tested that. That's something I haven't tested. I would assume, I would assume that one of two things could happen. Um, either it counts it based on the tile of the national park that shows that it's a national park. Like for example, here. It counts based on this tile or the tiles that are outside of the four range don't actually just the, the like individual tiles don't generate tourism. My guess would be that it would be this tile here is where the tourism is accumulating. And so as long as this is within three tiles of your city, you're fine. Can you build it in the fourth ring? You can. Um, if a city grows big enough for a long enough period of time, it just almost never comes up in DD games because the land gets filled up. So do I want another district in my capital? There's not a whole lot of options. 
four things. Bolshoi Theater, Sydney Opera House. I'm just going to build the Sydney Opera House just for memes. Can you explain how to count the distance between tiles? I never know whether a city will get a certain production from a factory or X. Okay, it's very simple. All you have to do is you start on the tile, you press G for grid, okay? Press G and you see the little grid appearing. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a little grid here. You start on the tile, and then every time you cross the edge of a hexagon, you increment your number by one. So I cross the hedge one, two, three, four, five, six. So a power plant from here would reach all the way to here. And I can confirm that that's how it works by going here to my power plant, right? Power plants have a range of six. Um, it reaches this tile here. So if I count in a straight line, turn on this, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? You, you basically, every time you step one tile, you increment. So cities can be one, two, three. I could have put a city here. What if there isn't a straight line? Um, you just count. It's always a straight line. As long as you never, as long as you are always moving away from the origin. So like, this is the origin, okay? As long as I am always moving away from this, I'm fine. If I go like one, two, three, that's dumb because I moved back towards this. So as long as I go one, two, three, four, five, six, that's still in range of a power plant. But a more easy way to do it is to just go one, two, three, four, five, six. And now any tile in a straight line for another six tiles is also in range, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I know that if I count out six tiles in one direction, I can then go one, two, three, four, five, six. And so if I want to know if a tile here is in range, I just count in a straight direction, six tiles, and then another six tiles in a straight direction. And if the tile I want to hit is inside that triangle, I know it'll hit it. Trigonometry, boys. Or like, or, uh, geometry? Use triangles to your help. Do you have extra lenses as well? I do. City overlap is a good one. So the city overlap uh, overlay tells you the number of tiles that occupy, that if you were to build a thing like a um, industrial zone, how many cities would it hit, okay? So let's say we have the default range is six, okay? A range of six or four. Let's say we were trying to build a temple of Artemis. If I was trying to build a temple of Artemis, you can also use this range finding tool in this thing is really helpful. So if I want to see what's hit by this industrial zone, I hover here and I can see that every red little marker is hit. Um, but let's say I was like, oh man, I want to build a Temple of Artemis, but I don't know where to build it. You turn on this city overlap map mode. I have links to all my UI mods in my videos underneath them. You go to the tile, right, that you want to build it on, and then you reference the color. So like, depending on the color up here in the top right hand key, I know that any of these tiles would hit four cities. Only the, but if it was only for the Temple of Artemis, only these tiles would hit four cities. Um, so you can use this information. I know that, for example, uh, blue corresponds to hitting six cities. So I know if I built an industrial zone on any of these six tiles, it would hit six cities. I also know that if I built an industrial zone here, it hit five cities or here it would hit five cities, right? And you can kind of tell that generally towards the center of your cities, you're going to have brighter colors. Now, if you go up to nine, you can see the colors get real interesting because the range of a nine industrial zone is insane. Like, I could build an industrial zone here and hit half of this continent. So, like, I think it goes all the way up to 12, actually. I think you can get a 12 range industrial zone, which literally hits an entire continent. Like, it's crazy how much plus one range makes a difference. Yeah, Mex Mexico is crazy. It's actually insane for electricity. And then you, if you combine Mexico with Magnus's ability of industrialist, where uh, power plants provide plus one power. You can get a really, really, really efficient power plant that hits a bunch of cities. For nine, it's James Watt. Yeah, for nine, for nine, it's James... No. Uh, is it Tesla? Yeah. For Tesla, it's... Tesla gives you plus three range. If you have the mausoleum, you can use this twice. So it goes up to 12. And then if you combine that with Mexico, it can go up to... Um, it can go all the way up to 15, I think is the maximum. The absolute maximum is 15. So theoretically, if I were to do that range somewhere over here, like I, I can't, I would have to 
use the developer tools to unlock free camera to just show how huge a 15 tile range is. This military engineer has outlived his usefulness, so he's going to be promptly deleted. So you can spend two charges of uh, Nikola Tesla in the same city if you have mausoleum? Yes. Not always the most efficient thing to do, but it can be done. All right, let's finish this flood barrier. Now we're going to flood barrier feed, flood barrier feed, and then flood barrier feed. So we finished more flood barriers. I got 16 turns, according to this. Ice cold furries, boom. Need to get more engineers to the north. And I think that's all the cities I could have saved. I'm not loving having the flood graphics. Hang on a minute. I'm going to quickly restart the game. Why does the game sound so dull? I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. It's been doing this for a while and I don't know. It was like when I swapped over to my new mixer, it happened. I, I think it might have something to do with me using voice meter banana to route the to route the sound through different things. But it started happening and I don't know why it sounds so dull. It's like it's weird. Like I didn't do I didn't do anything with my voice meter other than feed it through different things. So I don't understand why. Like I didn't do anything to my aux. Yeah, just really confusing. Okay, now the tiles are properly flooded. Okay, we fixed it. So we managed to save Kobe, which means Seaside Resorts out the Wazunga. Bazunga. We're just kind of in a holding pattern until Biosphere and Eiffel Tower are complete. Although I may actually win before that happens, which is kind of like silly. But I'm, I'm perpetually eight turns away from winning, which is um, kind of fun. I could decommission my power plants. I don't care enough to decommission. What am I doing in this place? I don't think I meant neighborhoods. Do you think Kobe will have beef uh, with you for chopping its cattle tiles a while back? True, probably. I know we're only siphoning 26 gold, but it's a high success, success chance mission to increase the level of my spy. That's why I'm doing it. A lot of my units, I'm just going to sit them still now, the exception of these military engineers. Um, and the reason I'm sitting them still is because I, uh, I, I don't really have much I can do with my land until certain things happen. We're in a holding pattern, basically. I need Eiffel Tower and Christo and like renewable. I, I need Biosphere and Eiffel basically to, to really do anything right now. So we do have shopping malls, which are nice. Six turns until I won. But I am just laying down what little bit of extra infrastructure I can, but it's probably unnecessary. This would be better. I'm going to turn these into forest, this into a forest because this will give me plus one tourism on this tile as well as plus two tourism on each of these tiles because of the crystal red and tour multiplying that. Four turns until I win. I never even got to finish the Eiffel Tower or the Biosphere. That's incredibly disappointing. Legitimately disappointed that I never got to build those wonders. So now that the game is almost over, I'm just going to start telling all my units to stand still while I end the turns using my... Uh, Tell units to be quiet, hockey, rather than shift entering. Two turns until I win, baby. Oh, we finished the biosphere. Hooray. Amazing. We never even unlocked solar farms. But the cool thing is uh, now all of these and I can confirm again that these are not accumulating tourism. But the cool thing is now that the oh, my God, 10 tourism. That's insane. 10 tourism. We need to do like a solar powered uh, tourism victory. I might do a bit of theory, theory crafting on that after this, actually. We'd have a little bit of fun. Very impressive comeback, Mr. Potato. I'm super proud of this game. It was a ton of fun. I got to show off an extremely grueling early war and I hit shift enter and I win the game because I'm a god. Thank you. Thank you. I'll accept, you know, Twitch primes, donations, bits, everything. Any primers to celebrate my victory? Uh, awesome. Beautiful. Wonderful. This was the hardest game. Okay. I really want to emphasize here uh, player science. This isn't even going to do it justice, okay? I legitimately made less than 10 science for the first 100 turns of the game. Okay? This is the marker that shows a 120 science, all right? I don't even reach the, the 24 science, like the 22 science marker until halfway through this game. Let me, let me put that again. I didn't reach 20 science for the first 145 turns of this game. Something like that. I was caught in a grueling war. Units killed. Look at this. This is like turn 10. And it's just war. Forever. Until here. And then it's peace. Look at this. Total religions founded? None. There's only losers found religions. I actually built a surprising number of wonders this game. I almost never build wonders. Because I, I think wonders are very... Just generally, they're not as good as they were in Civ 5 and they're harder to build in Civ 6. But look at my player score. I never even beat the AI. I, like, it's crazy. Player faith. What is faith generation, buddy? Look how far behind I am. 
player culture. I literally, this is 170. This, this, so this would be like 30 culture. I didn't hit 30 culture until a turn 160. Okay. Districts constructed. My God. I didn't build my first district until turn like 65. Cities captured. That's it. This is, now this doesn't show you that I captured a bunch of cities, but most of them ended up getting raised or recaptured because I kept losing the cities to independence. And so I eventually just had to start raising them. And then this is when I hit the new world right here around turn 160. I hit the new world and it's brrr, settlers. And that's also coincidentally exactly when my culture goes. Brrr, brrr, and so does my science. Although actually um, my science remained fairly steady. Um, it was weak up until here. Then I started building on my campuses. Then I hit the new world. How many units lost? I actually don't think... Yeah, I didn't even lose that many units this game. Now, keep in mind, okay, I am literally in a death war for the first 160 turns of the game, a permanent, ever, never-ending giga war. And I lost, in that time, like five units, maybe four. One, two, three, four. Four units I lost in that giga war. Okay, that was a 160 turn Giga War against DDAI, and I lost four units, and I think three of them were archers, and one of them was a warrior. Look how many wars! Oh my God, the war! Oh yeah, this is, whew, total cities destroyed. Really, I totally killed cities. I don't know why I don't have a graph here. Player gold, number of great people earned. Oh my God, look at this! I. Never even got a look. I never even got a a sniff. A crumb of great person, milady. Not even a crumb. Not a crumb of great person did I get this game. Not even a crumb. Player error score. I feel like I did okay on error score, actually. Uh, number of combats. <laughs> look at it. This is me and her fighting. You could tell when people's like graphs move together, you can tell they're fighting with each other. Oh my god. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.